This episode is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, the number one seller of games and gaming accessories. And GatheringMagic.com, the number one resource for Magic the Gathering news and articles. Hey everyone, my name is Ian and this is my Slow Bad Goblin Tinkerer deck. Alright, so here he is, the man himself, Slow Bad Goblin Tinker, and I know what you might be thinking, he is slow and he is bad, but none of these are true. He is a Mac Daddy. At 1 in a red, he is a 1-2 Goblin Artificia Legion, and he has a very unique ability in that you can sacrifice an artifact at instant speed to give another artifact you control indestructibility until end of turn. And this is a very cool, very innocuous ability. It gives your artifacts protection from spot removal. You can kind of pick and choose which ones you want to be destroyed during a, a sweeper effect. And uh, it's also just an artifact sack outlet, which very useful, as you'll see. Interacts very well with other cards in the deck. So that is my foily slow bed. As far as the rest of the deck goes, we got 31 mountains, because if I'm going mono red, you best believe I'm adding in as many mountains as I can. So 31, let's Bang those out of here real quick. Oh, it's just a, a mountain of mountains. And Mono Red has a hard time getting card advantage, so it's really interesting the ways you, you have to kind of go around to get it. Like this first non-basic land, the deck's got nine non-basic lands, Mad Blind Mountain. Very cool card if you haven't heard of it. It is itself a mountain, but... Um, it has a very cool ability. You can pay one one red and tap it to shuffle your library. If you control two or more red permanents, let's face it, you're usually going to be controlling two or more red permanents. And shuffling your library, more useful than you think, especially in mono red. we got Terramorphic Expanse here, if you can't read Chinese. And uh, staple in many commander decks. Not as useful in this deck, obviously. Doesn't have color fixing to worry about, but... Still good. We got Temple of the False God, awesome mana ramp card. We got Strip Mine for that LD troublesome lands. Tectonic Edge for the same reason. No more Gaia's cradles in my house. We got Mishra's Factory. Can turn into a 2-2 artifact that you can then sacrifice. Very useful. We got Encroaching Waste because Talarian Academies they have to go as well. Got Ancient Tomb because oh my God, this is old school Temple of the False God and it is awesome. Very good land. Alright, now into the red spells. We got Gamble, because it's the only red tutor. Can sometimes backfire, but uh, most of the times, Gamble's gonna pay off for you in a big way. We got Trash for Treasure. You can sack an artifact you don't want to return one that got destroyed from your graveyard. Pops it right into play. Very cool card, very cool card. Chaos Warp. Red does not have much spot removal for enchantments, for... Um, Planeswalkers, this does it all. This, very good card. It can sometimes also backfire, but, you know, that's Red's thing. Sometimes it's going to be backfiring on you, but you take it anyway. Like Koth, my boy Koth. He never backfires on you, though. You can always count on him. Great mono red Planeswalker. Does it all. Mana ramps. Gives you an attacker. Love him. Wheel of Fortune. Whew. This card. Oh, this has got to be my f most favoritist red card ever. So good when you're running out of cards in your hand, no gas left, ditch your hand of like zero, draw seven new cards. Wonderful. Insurrection, another commander staple. Insurrection is awesome. Can win you this game, can win you a game in one feral swoop. Play it. Goblin Welder. This in an artifact deck is unbeatable. So useful. You can exchange target artifact a player controls for target artifact in that player's graveyard. Good for recurring your own artifacts, but also for kind of screwing with your opponent. Wonderful card. Probably one of the best red one drops in the game. Charmbreaker Devils. Awesome card, especially in this deck. I got a lot of fireball effects. You're going to want to recur them and turns them into a beat stick when you do. Great card. Flame Blast Dragon. 
I have a lot of mana rocks. I have a lot of fireball type effects. He's a fireball on a stick. Awesome flying beater. Great finisher. Megatog, same as before. Sack all your artifacts. Swing in for the alpha strike. Boom, baby. Hellkite Tyrant. Now, this card hasn't been actually performing very well for me, but flavorly, he, he just deals with artifacts. I've never won the game with his second ability, but uh, I imagine it's awesome. Probably feels great. So, he's in there. Vicious Shadows, another staple in Commander. So good, so busted. You sacrifice a little 1-1 one, one Mer token, and they're taking damage equal the number of cards in their hand. Uh, yeah. Alright, now we got some fireball effects up in this piece. We got Star Storm. Awesome sweeper, you can cycle it for three. What's better than that? Devil's Play. Uh, blaze to the face. Blaze to a creature, you can flash it back. Awesome. Earthquake. Nuff said, Juggernaut coming at your face. Shattering Pulse. Now, this is a deck full of artifacts, but I can't deny that I'm going to be facing some artifacts. Shattering Pulse, best artifact, kill spell. Love it. Buy it back. Reuse it. Word of Seizing. Now, this card is awesome. You can play it as an instant. It has split second, and you can untap any target permanent, gain control of it until end of turn. Useful for taking control of Planeswalkers, but also... If they have a troublesome artifact, I can gain control of it and sack it to slow bad. Very nice. Good feeling. Comet Storm. Awesome sweeper. Enough said, really. Play with Comet Storm if you have one. Very good card. Okay, now on to the artifacts. Because what would an artifact deck be without artifacts? We got Lotus Bloom. Suspend for zero. Three turns later, you got a Black Lotus. Boom. Wonderful. Everflowing Chalice. It's okay. It's a, it's kind of like a, a soul ring, a mana rock that you can kind of get bigger as the game goes on. You draw this late game, it can be producing three mana every time you tap. It can be a mana vault. That ain't bad. Tormod's Crypt. Awesome graveyard hate. I can recur it. Keep using it. Very good. Very useful. Gets you out of pinches. Skull Clamp. Yeah, card's broken. Wayfarer's Bobble. Red doesn't have any land ramp whatsoever. Wayfarer's Bobbles, alright. It's basically a rampant growth. It's in the deck. Mana Vault, way too good. I, I love Mana Vault. Put it in all my commander decks. Very good card. Probably not as good as Sol Ring, but you know, I kind of like it just because it's, it's the underdog. We got Voltaic Key. Works very well with your boy Mana Vault right here. They're like, match made in heaven. Pay one and tap to untap a target artifact. What's better than that? Sensei's Divining Top. I only have one of these, but phew, so good. I think this and Skull Clamp, just in any deck, best one-drop artifacts. But you can't mention one-drop artifacts without mentioning Soul Ring. Awesome. Love the old art. It's in here. Got Ratchet Bomb because this card is just so brutal against token decks. It's not even funny. I love just... Dropping it and wrathing the board of tokens feels great. Copper Gnomes. Now this is very underrated in my opinion. You play Copper Gnomes, you pay four and sack it, and you can put any artifact from your hand into play. Works great with Blightsteel Colossus, anyone? Mm-hmm. Mindstone, a mana rock that you can sack to draw a card. Love it. Howling Mine. Red gets little to no card advantage, no draw, so Howling Mine, gotta be in there. Lightning Greaves, because duh. Winter Orb. Now, this makes it so everyone can only untap one land during each of their turns, but it's good because when I'm running out of gas, and it happens a lot in this deck, you can kind of just put this out, stall the game out until you draw some big finisher like a dragon, and then sack it to slow bad and untap all your lands and go in for the kill. I love Winter Orb. Unfortunately, no one else does. Ikor Wellspring, awesome with slow bed. You play it, you draw a card, and then when it dies, you draw a card. So I just usually play it, sack it to slow bed, draw two cards. And we got Mer Retriever. This card you can sack to slow bed and get an artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. Very useful card, especially for reoccurring stuff like Ikor Wellspring. Static Orb, kind of like Winter Orb. You can only everyone can only untap uh, two permanents during their untap phases, but uh. I get to choose when it goes away, so usually works out in my favor. We got Worn Power Stone. 
This card's pretty good. Uh, not as good as Soaring or Mana Vault, but it's essentially in there to serve as another one. Got Oblivion Stone. Great artifact wrath card. Staple in many decks, so I had to put it in. Crystal Ball, because you need more card filtration, and uh, Crystal Ball's pretty great. I'd say one of my favorite favorite ones in all my other decks because I can't afford those Sensei Divining Tops, but it's a great substitute. You got Junk Diver, basically another Murr Retriever, does the same thing, except it's a bird. Helm of Possession, oh, this card's so sweet. You can pay two, sack a creature to gain control of someone else's creature, and then you just keep the helm tapped, and it's yours forever. Very good card. And Solemn Simulacrum's here because he's usually the guy I'm sacking to gain control of something. So good. Sad robot. Fat baby. Put him in your decks. You got Sisse's Ring here. I like this art. It looks like real hands looking at that map. It's just a mana rock, but I need more mana. This deck hungers for the mana. And this guy delivers the mana. Su Chi. This is kind of a random inclusion I just had lying around, but I love him. He's like a cobra with an exposed brain, and when you sacrifice him, you gain four colorless, so... It ain't bad. I've seen worse. You got Navinral's Disc here, the Disc of Doom. You know it, you love it. Another Wrath in this deck, always appreciated, so had to get a disc. Staff of Nin. Great card, draw card, and I love the art on this promo one. I think this was given away at Friday Night Magic. Sweet card. It's a, your own personal Howling Mind that you can also tap to ping something. I just love it. Very good card. And Kuldatha Forge Master. This card is super bonkers. You can tap it and sack three artifacts to search your library for any artifact and pop it into play. Now you know I'm always going to be grabbing the Blightsteel Colossus, but it can also grab you just about anything. Wonderful card. And Mind's Eye, also a great, great card. Especially in Mono Red, there's a lot of cards in this deck that are essential for Mono Red, because Mono Red is just so gimped in so many ways. Mind's Eye, whenever an opponent draws a card, you can pay one and draw a card. I got a lot of mana rocks, so... I'm going to be drawing a lot of cards, especially in a four-player game. It gets pretty outrageous. We got Sitenul Flute. This card is very underrated, I think. You can tap X and tap it and uh, search your library for a creature card with total casting costs no greater than X and put it in your hand. I kind of just use it just to search up Goblin Welder because it costs one. Usually I can drop the flute and then tap an extra one that I have just to get the welder. Love Goblin Welder, and this guy searches for it. Can search for anything though in a pinch though. And sometimes you need to search for duplicant, so that's awesome. Duplicant is the most badass artifact there is, let me tell you. He's awesome. Comes into play, exiles a creature, wonderful. And now we got Gauntlet of Power, and I love the Gauntlet of Power. It is slow bad. Gauntlet of Power is great, comes into play, you choose red, creatures of the chosen color get plus one plus one, and whenever you tap a mountain, or any any land that you tap for red, doubles your red. Same thing for Cage Sun, but uh, this only works for you, so it's a little bit better, but it costs one more. We have Steel Hellkite here, he's great, he's a flying wrath on a stick, you can pump him up, give him some fire breathing, he also can destroy stuff, awesome card. Mer Battle Sphere is great in that he makes a lot of 1-1s that you can sacrifice to slow bad to protect your artifacts, but he's also a finisher in and of himself. Great card. Whenever you attack with him, you can tap all your Murs to give him plus X plus O, and he deals X damage. He's he's awesome. Mer Battle Sphere. A house. Got Spine of Isha here. Spine works so well with slow bad that it's not even funny. I feel bad sometimes. You play the spine destroy target permanent, and then you can sack the spine, and it comes back to your hand, and just keep doing it. It is so, so good. But you can also sacrifice the spine to Bosch Iron Golem. Now, Bosch is a powerhouse. He's a beater, he's a 6-7 trample, but you can also sack an artifact, pay for it, and he kind of flings the artifacts at people, which is a cool alternative to Slow Bad. I like him a lot. And even though all my artifacts are beginning indestructibility from Slow Bad, Let's just give them all indestructibility all the time with Darksteel Forge. Such a good card. And now, 
to round out the deck, we got the Super Mario Brothers themselves, Dark Steel Colossus and Blade Steel Colossus. Not much can be said about these guys, but they win. They win hard. And there you go, folks. That was Slow Bad a Goblin Tinker. Thanks for watching CMDR Decks. Please remember to subscribe and favorite.